First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's been a long journey. Started in 2016, for filling out a provisional ballot that never counted. 2017, I was convicted for, I was charged with illegally voting. And in 2018, I was convicted to five years. I've been out now for six years, over six years on the appeal bond, fighting to stay free. And yesterday, I finally got that news that I was acquitted from all charges. I was overwhelmed with joy. I'm so grateful that God carried me through this journey. I thank you all for the, all the people that supported me during this journey. I want to give thanks to my pastor, Freddie Haynes, my church, Friendship West, all my attorneys, Attorney Kim T. Cole, Attorney Allison Grinter, Allen, Attorney Justin Moore, ACLU, Texas Civil Rights, and everybody that supported me on this journey. It's been a long time coming. I'm so grateful, I'm so humbly grateful. And I knew victory would be the outcome. And I'm just so glad that the judges did the right thing. And again, I just ask you to keep me in your prayers and keep my family uplifted, because again, I'm just, again, just overwhelmed, trying to stay, trying not to cry. And what? Well, Thank you. Thank you. So much damn. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to <laughs> tell you my name is Allison Grinter Allen. I'm a criminal defense attorney for Crystal. So much damage has been done by this prosecution. So many people have heard this story and chosen to do what it was intended to do, which is keep people from voting. So many people have gotten the message that was sent here that the damage is absolutely incalculable. This prosecution was never intended to punish or deter Crystal Mason from doing anything. It was intended to punish and deter Texans from voting. And though the legal result is correct, and this acquittal is an excellent decision, the prosecution itself is the tragedy. And that's what we have to work to undo now. Crystal has been an absolute inspiration to so many people. She never asked to be involved in voter suppression or any kind of voter rights fight. But she rose to the challenge in such an inspiring way. And, and her story tells us that when the government tries to make an example of you, be an example. And everyone who knows Crystal has been absolutely moved by her bravery and her grace. But she should never have suffered like this. And Texas owes her a great deal of respect, gratitude, and a great apology because this is worse for our democracy even than it has been for Crystal. And the fight really is only starting. I'm good. Justin Moore, civil rights attorney for Crystal Mason, and I assisted with the appeal process up to a certain degree. So look, we're here to celebrate Crystal Mason being freed from this long odyssey in which she was maliciously prosecuted, not just by the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office, but by her neighbor, who was an election judge. We're here today to celebrate the fact that she's free now, but we're also here to put Tarrant County on notice. When you try to weaponize your elections department, when you try to weaponize your district attorney's office, when you try to use political affiliations to subjoin democracy in this country, when you try to target individuals who are innocent to serve as your symbol of a false narrative of illegal voting, 
we're going to come back and come after you. She's free now. But that freedom provides her every ability to go on offense. And that's what we intend on doing. We're going to lodge a civil rights complaint and prosecute those claims. She got prosecuted for false allegations. We're going to prosecute our civil rights claims for real allegations of malicious prosecution that are politically motivated. You cannot use your agencies for political whims. You cannot weaponize your agencies to go after folks because you view them as symbols of your false narratives. That's what we're going to do. Now, although I'm happy that Ms. Mason is able to live freely and go on about her life, she has six years of hell that she had to put up with. She actually had her federal prob probation violated due to this malicious prosecution where she had to spend real time in prison, real time that she's not going to get back. Now, you see, when she got out the first time, she was building her life back. She had her own company. She had her own uh, economic platform in which she was building a life not only for herself but for her family. And Tarrant County District Attorney's Office came and upended that. Her neighbor maliciously instituted a, a, a long-form narrative in which he lied about her voting illegally just so he could support this false narrative that minorities are out here voting illegally. You see, this isn't just an attack on Ms. Mason. This is an attack on all minorities who endeavor to lift up their voices and show that they have the First Amendment right to vote for who they want to uh, represent them in office. This is a clear, this is a clear violation of Crystal's civil rights. And we're going to actively push to make sure Tarrant County is held accountable for it. We're going after the Elections Commission. We're going after the District Attorney's Office. And we're going after her neighbor because they need to meet the same justice that they tried to have Crystal meet. We're going to actively pursue this. And we're going to make sure they can't do this ever again to anybody else that lives in Tarrant County. Thank you. Good afternoon. Alisa, A-L-I-S-A Simmons, S-I-M-M-O-N-S. -M -M Crystal Mason has been acquitted. That needs to be celebrated. However, that has occurred in Tarrant County, a county with a record and a history of egregious voter suppression tactics. This county, and I'll say we, stand as an embarrassment nationwide, a shameful example of trying to stop people from voting by any means necessary. And without regard, to the cost to taxpayers. I have been on Team Crystal Mason since this Tarrant County, former Tarrant County DA Sharon Wilson decided to prosecute this case. At the time, I was president of the Arlington NAACP and an active advocate for justice for Ms. Mason. Today, I am a Tarrant County Commissioner. And as a commissioner, I want to extend my sincerest apologies to Crystal Mason, her mother, her children, her family, for what this county has put her through. Upon hearing the court's decision last night, I called Crystal and she was ecstatic. She is a woman of faith and she knew that God will, would bring her through this. I did too, but I've been worried for seven years. 
her seven year ordeal vividly exposes the voter suppression strategies employed by Tarrant County's elected officials and grassroots Republican leaders, particularly targeting black voters, black and brown voters, as a way to dissuade others from participating in the electoral process. This case epitomizes the relentless campaign that Republican elected, leader, elected leaders and Republican grassroots leaders employ here in Tarrant County. I want to uh, express my thanks and congratulations to Ms. Mason's local legal team, Kim Coles, uh, Allison Greiner, um, for their tireless pursuit of justice to the ACLU and all those who stood by her and never let her feel like she was alone. Thank you. I am attorney Kim T. Cole. I am also one of Crystal Mason's civil rights attorneys. I um, would first like to thank the Second Court of Appeals for correctly applying the law to the facts of Ms. Mason's case this time. Um, I've been with Crystal every step of the way of this process. This has been a long, arduous, and what should have been a completely unnecessary journey. Um, when the Tarrant County District Attorney prosecuted Crystal, he said in his summation that he wanted to send a message to voters and requested that the judge sentence Crystal to a stern prison sentence, which the judge gleefully did. And so we're here today. For the past seven years, uh, Crystal, what Crystal and her family has endured has been unimaginable. This malicious prosecution to send a message to voters left her family in shambles. And she had to pull, um, she was actually, I held her hand as she walked back into federal prison to serve 10 months based solely on this unjust conviction. I keep hearing it said justice has finally been served. But in the words of the great Dr. Martin Luther King, justice too long delayed is justice denied. She and her family have been through hell. She lost her job, almost lost her home. But through the whole time, for seven years, she has, I have been there and I've watched Crystal pray and cry and, and, and get knocked down and get back up and keep going. And so Tarrant County wanted to send a message and they did send a message. They let us know that our votes count. Our voice matters. They wouldn't go through such extremes to prosecute an innocent woman and sentence her to five years in prison for a crime she did not commit if our voices didn't matter. So Crystal turned her pain into purpose and created her nonprofit, Crystal Mason, the fight against voter suppression in order to help other citizens understand their rights and be a part of the process and let their voices be heard. So they thought they silenced one woman, but what they did was they fueled an army. Because not only did Crystal turn her pain into purpose, she recruited her family. These folks standing behind me, they all registered the folks to vote too. <laughs> so, so they ignited a fire in her that she didn't even know was there. They inspired a purpose that she had no clue she would be called to fulfill. So 
while justice has been delayed, we can't celebrate just yet. Um, the, there's still a lot of work to be done. As Attorney Moore stated, Tarrant County needs to be held accountable. Tarrant County knew that Crystal did not know she was not eligible to vote. Their own witnesses at her trial told them that they didn't tell her she couldn't vote. And I want to make it clear, and people may not know this, the crime is in knowing that you're not eligible and voting anyway. Crystal Mason had no clue that she was not eligible to vote. She testified to that on the stand. The county's own witnesses testified that they never told her. The uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons said they never told her she couldn't vote. And they sent letters that were going to her home address when she was in Predator Prison. So clearly, she did not get those uh, notices that her uh, registration was no longer valid. In any regard, in spite of all of this, she was found guilty and sentenced to five years in prison. And here we are seven years later. Tarrant County must be held accountable. And not only to Crystal, but to their citizens for trying to implement measures to suppress their vote. So we will continue the hard work in dismantling a system that allows a black woman, an innocent black woman, to be charged, convicted, and sentenced to five years in prison for a crime she didn't commit. Hi, Angela Lucky, president for Grand Prairie NAACP. Now, today is Good Friday, and a lot of us are is celebrating Good Friday. And this is a Good Friday because um, Krista Mason, from day one, it's been long over more than six um, years and some that Krista Mason had to endure vengeance, voter suppression. All over the state of Texas, including here in Tarrant County, there are barriers that's put in front of the ballot box. But they decided to put a human being's life in front of a ballot box during a critical election time. And this is not justice when human lives are being sacrificed for voter suppression. Not only the city of Fort Worth should pay restitution to her and her family that have suffered over these, four, these six years, including her, her mother, her children, but also the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott. Um, her, Krista's record should be expunged and the governor should give her a pardon. She should get a new, a, a new beginning, a new, a new freedom. And we have to continue to work with our attorneys, with pastors. I want to commend Pastor Freddie Haynes for not giving up, for being by Krista Mason's side this long six years, and also her friends, her family, the attorneys, Attorney Cole, Attorney Allen, for being there, not allowing not allowing justice to just go to the wayside and Krista gets sentenced those five years and gets sent to prison. So it's Good Friday, but Tarrant County got to do what's right. They got to do what's right um, by Crystal and her family. Thank you. Uh, David Malcolm Magruder, uh, executive pastor at Friendship West in Dallas, Texas. Uh, where Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes III is senior pastor and where Crystal Mason is our member. And so we are so excited uh, and delighted and overjoyed uh, that this day of victory has come. Crystal uh, has prayed and we have been praying with her and for her and believing God with her. And we are grateful that Crystal not only kept the faith, but had the courage to tell her story and as has already been said, to turn that pain into progress. We could not be prouder and we are grateful to be a faith community that has stood beside her 
And so on behalf of Dr. Haynes and the entire Friendship West family, we are excited about Crystal's victory today. And we're also here because the vote is precious and because we must defend the right to vote. Let me say that again. The vote is precious. It is sacred. It is one with the blood of martyrs. And so when we talk about Goodman and Schwerner and Cheney, when we talk about the, the, the civil disobedience of Rosa Parks, we anoint again today this right for voting, this uh, effort for voting rights, this fight for voting rights when we remember and lift up the courageous action of our beloved sister, Crystal Mason. And so for those of us across this city, uh, across this county, uh, across this metro area, across the state of Texas, and across the world, as we reflect on, as Sister Lucky has said, this Good Friday moment, as we remember our crucified Christ who, like Crystal, was falsely imprisoned, and who, uh, as a function of that false imprisonment, was unjustly handled from court to court. We remember Crystal's example, as we remember not to grow weary in well-doing, knowing that we will reap if we faint not. And that is the promise that we have of Scripture. I want to read this uh, statement by Dr. Haynes. Crystal Mason has endured a nightmare of injustice but she has resiliently transformed pain into purpose. This woman of faith refused to give up and to give in, and with faith she has fought for justice, and today we celebrate the reversal of the trial court's judgment and her acquittal. We are grateful to God, the higher courts, and her attorneys for this victory, but it must be noted that this struggle is a part of a larger battle for justice in voting. We are in a battle against voter suppression and voter intimidation, especially in states like Texas. And Crystal has recognized this and become a crusader of voting rights for voter registration and for voter education. She has taken up the mantle of the voting rights activists who 60 years ago birthed Freedom Summer and helped set, set the stage for the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Friendship West and Rainbow Push stand with and celebrate this significant victory for Crystal and we pledge to continue this fight against voter suppression and voter intimidation. And that is from Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes III, Senior Pastor of Friendship West and the President of the Rainbow Push Coalition. And when I was in the drive-thru, I was uh, ordering me some chicken. And my attorney called me, uh, attorney with ACLU, um, Tommy. And he was like, hey, I got Savannah, Savannah on the phone. I was like, okay. I was like, what's up? Come on, give it to me. Because I already knew when they called together, it's got to be something. And he said, um, well, we got some news for you. Are you are you okay where you can talk? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And he's like, uh, you've been acquitted. And I just hollered and screamed and hollered and screamed. So loud. The people in the drive through they was like, are you okay? You're okay? And I just kept hollering and just praising God, just telling them, thank you, God, because he carried me through this victory. And it was just so amazing that I couldn't get everything out because I was just so grateful. It's, it's been, been a long, it's been a long journey. Since 2018. Technically 17, I was, con technically I was seven, 17, I was, con I was arrested for the offense and I lost a good job then. And then um, in 18, once I was um, convicted. convicted, I lost a job at Kubota, and they let me go over adverse publicity for me having a high-profile case. Mm -hmm. So it's been, yeah, a very long journey, very hard journey. What is next for you? Next is... Um, Civil rights lawsuit. Absolutely. So you don't feel like um, you can leave it where it is? You have to... You no, no, no. I, I lost a lot. Mm -hmm. I lost a lot. Uh, can you describe a little bit of, of the time in between uh, being released and now and hearing the news? The time in between yeah. of being released? I know it's been like like you said a lot of um, anxiety. The time in between. I was about to lose my house. I had to get help from my pastor and people to save my house. Um, me getting a job um, and then losing a job because of this situation and me not being able to find a job and my pastor have to ask people in the organization can they help me find a job because 
there was no job. They, they was taking jobs from me left and right. Whenever I start a job, I, lo I lose the job. And for what? Because of my situation. So it's been very overwhelming. Insurance, my kids losing health insurance. All of this paying out of pocket for things and expenses. So yeah, it's been a very hard and stressful journey for my family and my mom over feeling guilty because she was the one told me to go vote, you know? So it's just been overwhelming with her health, everything, you know? This is a tough one. Are you angry? Very angry, very upset because this decision could have been back in 2018. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to go this far. It's, it's the same thing when, when it came to the star witnesses. You had two star witnesses that said I was at the polling place at two different times. You know, you had so much. You had a, my, my supervised release officer, supervisor, Kenneth Mays. He testified on the stand and said, no, we never told her she couldn't vote. No, she never signed anything. That right there should have been an open and closed case. But no, I endured a lot, suffered a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Always being willing to, to talk and share about it. It's definitely tough. I'm sorry, do you mind if I ask you one more question? Okay. I'm Miranda Suarez with KBRA. It's nice to meet you. I just wanted to ask you what you would say to folks who see your case and get scared to vote. Same thing. Don't let my story discourage you from voting, but encourage you to go to the poll. Because our vote does matter, just like Attorney Kim Cole said. And that's the reason why everything took place with me, because our vote does matter. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks so